Today we're going to be talking about triads. We'll start with a major scale. All we have to do is have our scale. Obviously, you know we're in the key of C since there are no sharps or flats. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Next up, we're going to add our Roman numerals. So just like you can give solfege, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, or whatever key you're in, the pitches, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, you can also number these uh, scale degrees, this is what we use the term. So where C is do, that would also be the first note in the scale. D would be the second, three would be the third, F the fourth, G the fifth, A the sixth, B the seventh, and C repeats as one. Now you may be looking at this and thinking, why are certain Roman numerals capitalized and others in lowercase? We'll get to that in just a second. <clears throat> so we're going to start talking about major triads to begin with. Now just a second ago, <clears throat> we saw that a few of these were capitalized and a few weren't. There are three chords in a major scale that are major. So the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. What makes it a major triad? Well, remember last time we talked about thirds. And if the third is a major third, then that makes the triad major. Tri being three, like a triangle. So there will be three notes in the chord. So what we do is we have our root. So the first chord being C, we skip a pitch, go to E, skip a pitch, go to G. That's how we get our triads. Same for F and same for G. So back to the one chord because C is the first pitch in the scale. It's the considered one. So you have C, E, and G. Now all we have to do is between the first third, so from the C up to the E, we count the number of half steps. C, that's one, two, three, four. So there are four half steps between C and E, which makes it a major triad. And you could do the same for F, the same for G. One, two, three, four half steps between F and A. So that triad is now a major triad because the third between F and A is a major. Now we can talk about the, the triad that's on top later. Just know that that's a minor triad. So to recap, here's G to B to D. So the number of half steps between G and B are four. One, two, three, four. That makes that a major third. The number of half steps between B and D is only three. So that makes it a minor. So if I were stacking these from the bottom up, it would be a major third. And then there would be a minor third on top. And that creates a major triad. So now we're moving on to minor triads. The concept is the same. There's only one difference. That the lower third is consistent of a minor third, which would be three half steps. So in the key of C, there are four chords that are, well really three that are minor. The seventh chord is its own special chord that's called a diminished chord, but we'll get into that in a later lesson. <clears throat> so let's add our thirds on top of each root pitch. So D, I skip a pitch, that's E, and I go to F. I skip G and I go to A. Same for E, same for A, and same for B. So there we have it, there's our triads. Okay, again, just like we said, a minor third is three half steps. So if that's the case, we calculate this, the distance between the lower, so the root, and in, the, in, this, in this instance, the uh, D, or the two chord, between D and F, it's three half steps. So it'd be F and A, and now I'm gonna be calculating the distance between D and F. So we have one, two, three half steps. You can use the same concept for any of these chords, except the seventh chord. And again, that is called a diminished triad, but that'll be in a later lesson. <clears throat>